Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application. Today we are going to have 24th lecture. Before going to this lecture, let us quickly recall what we did in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we have seen how the eigenvalues can be computed, how the maximum eigenvalue can be computed and a minimum eigenvalue can be computed by using the strategy called power method. We started with some initial approximation and we went iteratively to get the maximum eigenvalue. Similarly for minimum eigenvalue we took the inverse of the matrix and we did in the same fashion so we arrived the minimum value minimum eigenvalues so the strategy is very useful in many applications apart from that we also need to see the diagonalization process how the diagonalization process helpful to us how the numerical stability can be computed for a particular application is very important in order to find out the best approximations. Extreme caution should be taken in using diagonalization or block diagonalization to compute the eigenvalues of a matrix. The following theorem shows that the conditioning of the transforming matrix X has a significant impact on eigenvalue computation. So this theorem demonstrates us how significant the eigenvalue computation is. So let us see floating point of X inverse AX is essentially X inverse AX plus some error e. So, e is the error. E is the error. Where norm of E2 is approximately mu times of norm of X2 norm of X inverse of O. So, that means this is a 2 norm. The implication of the theorem can be defined as Thus, if X is ill-conditioned, if X is ill-conditioned, the computed matrix X inverse AX times of E, that is X inverse AX plus E, will be different from A and the computed values of, eigenvalues of will have some error C. So, this is the error term. Because of this, it is not advisable to compute the eigenvalues of a matrix A using what we call Jordan canonical form. Whenever a is close to a defective matrix when A is close to a defective matrix. The transforming X will be highly ill conditioned. So, whenever the matrix becomes ill conditioned need to handle separately. Need to handle separately. So, how do you reduce reduction to Heisenberg form via orthogonal similarity? So, this is what is called orthogonal similarity. An arbitrary n-minor matrix can always be transformed 
into an upper Heisenberg matrix H of U by orthogonal similarity that is there exists an orthogonal matrix P such that P times of A multiplied with P transpose is H of U. The importance of Heisenberg transformation lies in the fact that the reduction to a Heisenberg form must be performed before applying the QR iteration algorithm to a to compute the eigenvalues. So therefore, one needs to be very careful how actually you are computing the QR iteration algorithm. The process of QR factorization using householder matrices as described before can be easily extended to obtain P and H of U. The idea is to reduce the matrix A to an upper Heisenberg matrix H of U by successively pre multiplying A with a series of householder matrices followed by post multiplication with their transposes. So, the matrix P in this case is constructed as the product of n minus 2 householder matrices P1 through Pn minus 2. P1 is constructed to create zeros in the first column of A below the entry 2 comma 1 resulting in the matrix P1 times of A P1 transpose is A of 1 that is P1 times of a times of P1 transpose is A of 1. P2 is determined to create zeros below the entry 3 comma 2 of the second column of the matrix A1 or resulting in the matrix P2 times of A1, P2 transpose, which will be A2, and you can continue this process. Similarly, you will have P3, A of 2, P3 transpose is equal to A of 3. So, the process consists of n minus 2 steps. Note that an n by n Heisenberg matrix contains at least n minus 2 times of n minus 1 by 2 zeros. An illustration let n is equal to 4. So, 4 minus 2, 4 minus 1 divided by 2. So, which will be equal to 2 multiplied with divided by 2, 2 to cancel which is 3. When you go for step 2, look at this non-zero entry over here, non-zero entry and these are all non-zero entries and anyway this element is made to 0. So, these are the 3 non-zero entries, then these are the 0 entries. So, this will form H of U is equal to A2 which is P1 times of A1, P2. Okay. Notes each of the matrices P1, P2 is computed in two steps as shown below. Continue like this. The zeros created by multiplication of A by P1 do not get destroyed by post multiplication with P1 transpose. That is a speciality. Similarly, for the other steps, 
you can do in the same process. The general case now can be easily written down in the following order to simplify the notation and save computer storage each of the matrices A k will be stored in place of A. So, find a householder matrix P 1 of n minus 1 such that P 1 cap of A 2 1 A 3 1 like this A n 1 will be equal to x 0 0 0 0 0. Define P 1 is i 2 0 0 i 2 and implicitly computing the values a of 1 is p 1 times of a p 1 times of transpose. So, essentially this will become like this. So, that is a of 1 is so non 0 non 0 non 0 non 0 and this is also changed this is also changed and these are all zeros. And step 2 find a householder matrix P 2 of the order n minus 2 such that P 2 times of A 3 2 A 4 2 like this you will have A n 2. So, that is equal to x 0 0 0. So, define P 2 is equal to I 2 0 0 P 2 and implicitly compute these values. So, A of 2 is equal to P 2 A of 1 P 2 transpose. So, then ultimately you do get this matrix A that is A of 2 is these are all non-zero values and we will have 0 values over here. The general step K can now easily be written and down as at the end of n minus 2 steps the matrix A n minus 2 is an upper Heisenberg matrix H of u. So, obtaining the orthogonal transformation matrix P, so you will have set P is equal to P n minus 2, P n minus 3, P n minus 4 like that P 2, P 1. Then P is orthogonal since it is the product of n minus 2 householder matrices. And it is easy to see that P multiplied with A of P transpose is H of u, householder. For n is equal to 4, you can see P is equal to P 2, P 1. P A times of P transpose is P 2 P 1 times of A P 1 transpose P 2 transpose. So, that is P 2 times of P 1 A P 1 transpose is A 1 P 2 then again it is A 2 which is equal to H of U. So, you can see some example over here look at this this is a 3 by 3 matrix. Now, it is a 3 by 3 so n is equal to 3. We have just one step to perform. Form P1 cap will be equal to I2 minus 2U1 U1 transpose upon U1 transpose U1, then such that you will have P1 cap times of 1 1 will be equal to some non zero value and this is 0. So, you will have U1 is equal to 1 1 plus root 2 times of E1. So, like this you get. So, ultimately we will end up with this matrix. Similarly, when you write P 1 hat cap that is I 2 minus 2 U 1 U 1 transpose upon U 1 transpose U 1 that is equal to 1 0 0 1 minus 0 0.2929 multiplied with this this matrix. So, ultimately we will end up with this matrix minus of 0 0.7071 0 0.7071 minus of 0 0.7071 0 0.7071. 0 0 0 Form P1 out of P1, so you get this matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, etc., 0, P, etc., and you end up with this matrix. So, look at over here, these are two zeros, these are two zeros. So, that means four zero entries, five are non zero entries. So, closer to sparseness. So, form the Heisenberg matrix H and store it over A. So, you can write it A is equal to A of 1 that is P 1 times of A P 1 transpose which is equal to this matrix. So, the, this is the one entry, this is an two zero entries, this is what we call it as H of U. So, the algorithm is householder Heisenberg reduction is 
input is a n by n matrix a, output is an n by n upper Heisenberg matrix a stored over a. For k is equal to 1, 2, 3, etc., n minus 1, 2, determine the vector uk, which is uk plus 1, uk plus 2, uk, unk transpose, defining the householder matrix pk, that is ik minus 2 into uk times of uk transpose, uk transpose uk of the order n minus k and a scalar alpha such that you will have this matrix. pk transpose ak plus 1k like this you do have this matrix. So, these are all zeros except this is non-zero. So, then next is store sigma over ak plus 1 comma k. So, you have ak plus 1 comma k is equal to identically sigma. So, compute beta is equal to 2 upon uk transpose uk and save uk and bk. Update the entries of a in rows k plus 1 through n and columns k plus 1 through n by permutation of the matrices. And then in column k plus 1 through n rows 1 by 1 and post multiplication by performing the multiplication implicitly. Store them in the respective positions of the matrix A. So, you have A of k plus 1 n k. So, this is the matrix you do get and A of 1 n k plus 1 n, this is the matrix you do get and end. So, this is algorithm for that. So, what is that? Uh, the algorithm does not explicitly compute the transforming the matrix P. So, like the previous case when we did it LU decomposition. So, straight away you do get upper triangular matrix, but lower triangular matrix can be formed by using the multipliers. Note that P is equal to Pn minus 2, Pn minus 3, Pn minus 1, P2, P1, where each PK is this is the idea, this is the diagonal entries. So, we can see some example for this. Let I have a matrix 3 by 3 matrix. Just one step k is equal to 1, u of 1 is equal to 2.2019.6667 transpose and sigma is equal to point minus of 0 0.306056. So, I do calculate by using the previous algorithm a to 1, b1 and update the values of a12, a13, then a21, a22, a23, a32 and form the matrix. So, this matrix will be looks like this. So, if it is very curious to see what is the flop count over here. The above algorithm requires 10 by 3 n cube that means for n is equal to 3. So, that means 10 by 3 into 3 into 3 into 3. So, 3 3 cancel 3 3 are 9. So, 90 floating point operations per second required for a matrix of size 3. So, the above algorithm requires 10 by 3 n cube flops to compute HU. This count does not include the explicit computation of P. P can be stored in factored form. If P is computed explicitly, another 4 by 3 n cube flops will be required. However, when n is large, the storage required to form P is prohibitive. So, let us see tridiagonal reduction of a symmetric matrix. If the matrix A is symmetric, then you see here P times of A P transpose is H of U. It follows immediately that the upper Heisenberg matrix H of U is also symmetric and therefore is tridiagonal. Thus, if the algorithm is applied a symmetric matrix A, the resulting matrix H of U will be a symmetric tridiagonal matrix H T. Further, one obviously can take advantage of the symmetry of A to modify the algorithm. For instance, a significant savings can be obtained by storing the advantages of symmetriness of these matrices. So, therefore, obviously the flower, the flop count can reduce. The symmetric algorithm requires only 4 by 3 n cube flops to compute T compared to 10 by 3 n cube. So, 10 by 3 n cube is much bigger and that is 3.3 something multiplied with n cube whereas here 1 point something obviously it is better. The round off property is essentially the same as the non-symmetric algorithm. The algorithm is a stable algorithm. Well, given rotations and reduction to Heisenberg form, how the matrix can be reduced to using the given rotation when you have a, the entries are rational numbers or complex numbers. As in the case of QR factorization, the given matrices can also be employed to transform an arbitrary n by n matrix A 
to an upper Eisenberg matrix HU by orthogonal similarity. However, to do this, given rotation must be constructed in a certain special manner. For example, in the first step, given rotation will be like this. So, if you continue like this, successively compute the values of P1, P2 like this and form a matrix of A of 1 is P1 times of A of P of 1. The zeros on the first column, below that 2 on entry, the other steps are similar. This reduction will require about 20 by 3 n cube. That means higher than that. The other steps are similar. So, to compute H of almost twice as required by the householder reduction. Well, if you look at this example, look at 3 by 3 example, find C and S. So, therefore, C, S by using that property, so multiplied with 1, 1 and this is the non-zero vector. So, C is equal to 1 by 2, S is equal to 1 by root 2. So, then step 2, P1 you do get, that is J2, 3, theta. So, you form this matrix X, these are the only zeros and ultimately when you write this matrix A, so you do get this is the 0, this is the 0. So, this is the form of the matrix you do get at the end of the last step. So, therefore, what can be learned today in, the, in this lecture is householder transformation is effective in handling and uh, especially when the matrix is symmetric, we can take the advantage of the symmetric and obviously the flop count will get reduced, uh, flop count will get reduced and uh, thereby we will be achieving the, the good convergence solution for the best approximation. So, thank you very much for listening to this class today.